Go ahead, take us in, Grant. I'm not recording yet. We are. Yeah. Are we? <laughs> uh, it's my own. Uh, right. Right. Welcome to Owns, Twigs and Wigs. Yeah, baby. Podcast about music. Sometimes. Sometimes. Hi guys, welcome to Bones, Twigs and Wigs. We are here today. We have a very special guest. Uh, but before I introduce him, we do have Grant all the way in Australia. Hello, Grant. How are you doing? Hello. You okay? I'm I'm nice good. and calm. You surviving? You've changed background since last time we saw you. <laughs> this might be my new thing. I'm just going to record in a different room every day. I know. I like that. And we got Johnny, cool. who's uh, in the US of A in yeah, Washington. Zoo. Yes, Washington DC. Don't I keep forget the DC. Not Washington <laughs> State, baby. It's because you've got the same things repeated I all know, over your I country. Know. Yeah, it's not my fault. It's yeah. like a Portland on the east and a Portland on the west, and it confuses <laughs> the hell out of me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, today we've got a special guest. We'd like to have a few guests on. So we've got Mick Ayesa, who Ayesa, sorry. See. Ah, yes. Ayesa. Ah. Ah, yes, sir. Ah, yes, Mick ah. Ayesa. <laughs> Hello. So, th- hey, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Bones, no, twigs, wigs, and yeah. migs. And migs. And migs. And migs. <laughs> there Boom! you go. Perfect. Done. Boom. Perfect. Now, Mind if you're Australian, blown. see, there you go. And if you're Australian, you might know where uh, Mick from many things. I, I just saw your, I think, television debut before, which we'll get into. Um, but you've been <laughs> on the West End. You performed in front of the Queen. You performed with Queen. You performed on Broadway. You've done... European tours of Rock of Ages and all sorts of things. Well, international tours, sorry, not European. But uh, yeah, you've done a bit of everything. So uh, we're going to ask you lots of personal questions. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I grew, grew up in Australia, born in the Philippines, lived in London for a while, spent a lot of time on ships with these clowns. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I find myself in New York, New York City. And that is you there. Mig is that a fantastic is photographer. Me, me and Mig are both, uh, <laughs> both photo geeks. We like our camera stuff. <laughs> we do love our camera stuff. Um, Steve's, uh, yeah, we, we go, whenever we go on, on work together, we always have these photo expeditions, oh, which man. is always fun. Yeah. We're absolute geeks, by the way. <laughs> we embarrass ourselves and we don't care. We don't care. <laughs> do you, I mean, just before we get on some of the questions about music and stuff, there was one time me and Mig were walking in Taronga, I think, near Mount Monganui in New Zealand. Um, mm. And we were taking photographs and Mick has quite a, uh, well, ladies, he has quite a long lens. And um, <laughs> he, he was taking some like covert photographs of some cool things. And there was these two terrifying looking dudes in the water. And he took a photograph of them because they were hairy as hell. And they were wearing leather jackets in the water. They were like part of in a biker. Water. Thing. And they all had tattoos on their faces. Oh, yeah. Like it was the tribal thing. Once we're warriors, these guys were still warriors. Yes. They right. were you could just, Maori. Maybe just a modern rapper. Maori yeah. death <laughs> you know. um, machines. That's what they were. Where they were and they, they saw him take the photograph and um, came over to us. I've never been so ready to run away and leave somebody. Because <laughs> <laughs> this guy was terrifying. Like, he was there, inside. who are you? Come here. You know, the funny oh. thing was, all they wanted to say was, hey, did, did I look good, eh, bro? Yeah. Did yeah. I look right, bro? <laughs> bro, was hey, I all right? Did I look good? Show me your good side. All right. Show me your good side. Can I have an airdrop? Yeah. Yeah, but, nah, but, but at one point he was like, you got to delete it. You're the feds. You got to be the feds. And you're like, do I look like I'm not the feds? I'll show you the photo. So you got to delete the film. Take the film out. It's like, there's oh, no right? film. There's no film. It's yeah. a digital. It's digital. Has, like, there's no like, film. I can't give you the film. <laughs> he says, oh, but do I look good? Yeah, yeah. You, you do. <laughs> oh, send it to me, bro. All yeah. right. Oh, um, well, I must admit, drop. though, I did. I, lo- I lost the email that he gave to me. Oh, oh I know he's upset. Hey. If he's I don't think he remembers you. to be perfectly honest, and I think it's probably best we don't make that connection. I said, "Yeah, there we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll stay in touch." <laughs> <laughs> he's a scare. Oh man, that was scary. <laughs> I'll show you that photo. Yes, I never actually saw it. I saw it in camera, but I didn't see it past them. Oh my god! Yeah, I have to show it to you. It's uh, it's as scary as it was, and here yeah. it is right now. Bing, boom. And check this wow, one out. That's an amazing picture, Mick. Uh, check, check this one oh, out. Man. That's a great oh, picture. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. But oh, that okay. wasn't the best yeah. one. This one's the best one. <laughs> yeah, Mick, you're now in New York. Is it Manhattan you're in? Yeah, I am, yes. I am in Manhattan. Is um, Manhattan a fancy part of New York? Am I correct in saying it's a fancy part? Uh, it's the main island of New York, but uh, it, it, they're fancy bits and they're not so fancy bits. Mm-hmm. You know? 
And I think there are some great, like some parts which are very affluent, and very gentrified. Mm-hmm. And there's some places that are still pretty, um, you know, uh, it's a bit rough, some areas, but yeah. it's, I, I find myself really, I think it's, I'm pretty safe in New York. I find myself pretty relaxed here. I mean, I've never had any trouble living in New York. The only place I ever got mugged was actually in London. Yeah, so, sorry, Jesus. Yeah, so there you go. So I've, I've had no problem here in New York, but, um, you know, it's, it's fine. Oh, we live in a really nice area though, I must admit. Um, it's because I live with my girlfriend and she sometimes comes home late at work from work and I don't want her walking the streets, you know. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. So we're, we're, in, we're in a really, really safe, decent part. That's cool. That yeah, but, uh, but New York, you know, it's like it's. it's I can. Ima- I guess you can imagine living in Washington, Johnny. I mean, yeah, man. Because I was just about to say, um, like you know, yeah, we're 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 going through a lot of like uh, gentrification as well. Like, it's certain parts that you know, I would I wouldn't even walk down, and now you see like whole families like walking their dogs and yeah, yeah. you know, like pushing strollers with the babies, and I'm like, <laughs> bro, like ten years ago, mm. like. They were like crack pipes, <laughs> like, yeah, right. You know, and like drug addicts and stuff, like walking yeah, right. this whole strip, man. Yeah, it's well, Forty Second Street in the eighties, you know, mm-hmm. it used to be just all you know, pimps and um, yep. peep houses and strip joints and drugs mm-hmm. and hookers, and now it's Disneyland. So it, you know, mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. But it's I'm amazing. just saying also about you know what's happening now. Like not only did we have this isolation lockdown with the uh, mm-hmm. with COVID, but now we've got you know. Sort of riots happening and protests, right. you know. Mm-hmm. The protests, I have no problem with. The riots are a little bit weird. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah, we, kind we of just, undermines we just everything. To like an hour-long talk about that um, yesterday or the day before. Mm-hmm. It's and it's like, funny because uh, we didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just kind of <laughs> happened. The hour, yeah, the well, hour before we got started on yeah, the official episode. It, it just happened. Just I mean, everybody's talking episode, about it. Right. Yeah. Well, it's the elephant in the room. How can you not talk about it? You know, yeah, no. it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. It's, it's crazy to say, well, you know, all I can say is things have to change. And right. uh, if this is what's going to do it, then go. Just, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. I think it yeah, has to go through this thing. Like I was saying to the guys yesterday, I mean, I... The riots that stem from the protests, I don't really have a massive problem with because people are angry and it's going to happen. It's not good, right. don't get me wrong, and I wouldn't like to be stuck in it. And there are certain people that are doing it just for violence, just to steal, and mm-hmm. that's obviously wrong. But that's uh, the, well, that, 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 the opportunities there. Well, that's what yeah, drives yeah. me insane. Some people because get it is it's a noble you know. cause. This is a, it's a, it's a, something that you know it should definitely be addressed, mm-hmm. and yet these looters are... Completely undermining everything. So mm-hmm. they're shooting it, themselves it in the foot. The, it dilutes it's, the message. It's just, it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's tough, I think, when that amount of people in a crowd and certain things happen. And yeah, it's, I mean, in England at the minute, we've got similar things, but not looting and riots, particularly more fairly peaceful protests, pretty peaceful, apart from uh, the white skinheads. <laughs> <laughs> who I was telling the guys yesterday, I don't know if you've seen this, Mick, but no. today they've been down there today as well. So all weekend oh. in London, all the white supremacists basically in, in England, uh, the English Defence League, because they're defending my country, apparently. Um, they go down there and they're going down there to protect the Winston Churchill statue because people are talking about statues getting torn down and whatever. And they're doing Nazi salutes. Now, the, the irony uh, is yeah, right. insane. I was watching Mick's face. It's like, it's like, yeah, so far that makes sense. So far that makes sense. Nazi, what? Yeah. We're here to protect the Winston Churchill statue, Zick Heil. Hi, Hitler. Like, what is going uh, yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to the obvious the obvious thing you should be doing, like the fucking... Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually, Winston there's a picture has, today. has provided you with a hand symbol. There was a pl- picture today that I saw. Um, <laughs> the policeman who passed away when the terrorist attack on uh, London Bridge... Oh, when uh, the guy uh, stabbed him, he passed away, and there's a plaque there for where he died. Well, there's a picture today of one of these guys pissing on it. He just needed uh, to go, so he just chose to go there, pissed on it. What the? What are these white? Su- what are these white supremacists? Yeah, yeah. Basically, they they say they what? would say they're not, but they are. So there you go. That is, well, that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Jesus. They have no I mean, problem with black people as long as they're not in England. So they're lovely human beings. <laughs> my favorite type of people we should get one on that would be yeah. can we get a good I would love to do an episode with like a good classic like soccer hall again that'd be oh 
I, I know a few. Uh, <laughs> well, they're in London now. You've they come got up. to know. You're a you're a Man U fan, right? You've got to know a few. Yeah. Well, but this not- is the thing. You know, the thing <laughs> is that everyone, uh, these people are just looking for an excuse. Oh yeah. To 100%. perpetrate some kind of violence, and mm-hmm. so. Well, because we don't have sports at the minute, they they don't have that to get it out of their system. Some of them, I think. Right? Yeah, and it's like, right. what a time, what a time for it to begin, you know, a time when everybody's bad. already frustrated and And if they can just wait, man, if they can just wait until July 31st, NBA is back, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, just got, we just got football back, you know. Yeah. yeah AFL. Yeah, I watch you do. You know what I'm talking about. AFL just came back oh. mm-hmm. this last week. Yes. Yeah, that's the that's that's the hardcore football. Yes. Right? English yes. football back on Wednesday. Two yeah, more days. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? No, I, mean, who cares? Oh, cares. I do. I do. I, to be honest, you know, I, I live in the states, Johnny. You know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> I've tried so hard. Hey, he's still one of. He's still I've one tried of so like hard, Brett, yo. <laughs> I've tried so hard. I've, I've watched the games. You know, I'm I'm New York Jets. Yeah, I went to the game and I'm like. <laughs> Why? <laughs> why? 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 Oh I didn't get it. God. I didn't get it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. You I sound didn't. you sound just like Grant, yo. Like <laughs> yeah. Grant's like Grant's different, like basketball. Different team Bro. for offense and defense, and you have one person doing what? What? what so what's okay. F- so 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 he so he touches him. That's a foul. I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. It's like, it's like, bro, like, what the do you ba- mean? The basket- and it's, and it's- basketball is a masterpiece. Basketball is poetry. I must I disagree with you there, Grant. Basketball well, is I'm, genius. Thank you. If it's a thank poetry, you. I am I am substantially illiterate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> NFL, the NBA, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, more of a basketball. I don't sports. get American football. I just, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I like American Absolutely. football to an extent. I like basketball to an extent. I've yeah. never, I've, well, I've been to an American football game in London, and it was phenomenal. It, the atmosphere right. was yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah some amazing. of like the very first mm-hmm. games are like they do them in London, like the preseason games and stuff are like. In yeah, no, London. they're part. Of, they're part of the league. No, they they do a few games that are actually part That's of the actual right. league. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we saw the the Buccaneers versus the Panthers. Is it the Panthers? That sounds about right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Carolina yeah. Panthers. Yeah, but and it was amazing. Yeah. And a lot of American fans were over there. And what mm. I was surprised about, because in England you die, but they were like all the fans were just sat wherever they was at. Like in England, you have an away end and a home. Like and, you don't mix right. the fans up because people kill each other. Right, right. And right. I was sat wow. next, to it and I I decided to go for the, uh, the. Did I go for the bucket? No, I went for the Carolina. I went for the Panthers. Just. Mm-hmm. Why not? I'm actually a 49ers fan. They obviously weren't there, but mm-hmm. so like, oh, just go for the Carolina. Yeah, do that. And people were sat next to each other wearing different jerseys, and nobody killed each other. I was like, yeah. wow, this is. It's just it's if lovely. anything, it's just smack Drinking talk, beer, man. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's like they they just talk smack, mm-hmm. and like you know if they if they get a little rowdy, I mean you know it happens, you know, but like nobody's like as crazy as like Manchester yeah, United, man. you know. Like, really? ah, like just like straight, <laughs> like what is that? <laughs> like turn what? it, turn the whole stadium into uh, into into like gladiator or something. You know, what I'm saying? Arsenal fans are all gentlemen. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That's the funniest thing I heard in a long time. <laughs> best <thing. laughs> the best thing you have in American sports. The best thing. Cheerleaders. You said what? Cheerleaders. Oh, the That's cheerleaders? A, makes, we don't That's have right. that. Oh. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah, you guys don't have cheerleaders. No, we don't have that. Well, I must admit, Mer- the Americans just know how to put on a show. I that mean, is true. Without a doubt. Mm. And, you know, football, American football is a show. Oh, man, there's yeah. fire and cheerleaders. We, we have like warm beer and maybe a pie at halftime. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it rains. No, <laughs> That's, That's, like, we had, um, That's why we they had kill each other. Once. You had a what? We had meatloaf once at the AFL Grand Final. Oh, the, um, the band, right? I thought, I mean, is it the band? <laughs> the, yeah, the guy at his band, but um, and his, his band, band yeah, was I'm great. Like, but he I was. Don't know uh, I gotta say, oh, it's a, one one of my favorite gigs ever. I played and sang, sang the national anthem and played. That was the halftime entertainment for the season opener for the Houston Rockets versus the New Dude. Orleans Hornets in in, in in Houston. Dude. And when I was singing my songs in, in, in intermission. Uh, intermission. That's how South Stage uh-huh. EMI. Back on stage. Half <laughs> <Right. laughs> time, half time entertainment. Uh-huh. Uh, the cheerleaders were my backup dancers, and I didn't oh, even man. know that until I started singing. And then they were there. I'm like, oh, my life is so good. <laughs> were you were you single at the time? No, 
Yeah. Uh, okay. I got divorced oh. so shortly afterwards, but that's that's a different story. <laughs> it, it, it weren't that connected why. at all. <laughs> no, that it wasn't. Why. That wasn't why. You sure? But now, in hindsight, I think maybe I should have. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, when you look back, like, I was such a good boy, and when I think back at mm-hmm. it now, like, why? It's like, <laughs> man, so, damn it! Life mm-hmm. is short. ah. If I ah. Oh, if, I anyway. go, if I can go back yes. in time. Oh, I'm feeling so much pain right now. Mm-hmm. Right. All these missed opportunities that I did not take. If, if well, I can know. just if I can just get in that DeLorean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I can get in that DeLorean oh, and just that's gotta how, go back in time. Yeah. That, that, where is it? <laughs> that flux capacitor. I if I could find a flux capacitor and oh, put it in my DeLorean, man, I'm you know, back and oh, I'm, we're tearing, I'm just, just tearing up the shit. town. No, just put, put, put cans and put, and banana peels in there and trash <laughs> and just <laughs> like, just stuff it all. <laughs> I mean, if this, if this who, thing carries on, I'm gonna end up looking like Doc Brown if this thing carries on as well. So bro, I'll take that. For role. those who don't know, I'm like I'm a huge fan of Back to the Future, so all of those were like Back to yeah. the Future references, just for uh, the people who are clueless. Speaking of Back to the Future, you know that they have a uh, a musical, Back to the Future musical that opened up in. Um, I heard about that. Manchester, I think. Yeah, hmm. I think I, I did about, hear about really? that. Yeah. yeah, I would love to see it, man. Maybe I can like find a bootleg or something of it. You know, there's some actually. Actually, it sounds pretty good. The guy mm-hmm. pl- they sing um, uh, the power of love. The cast okay. do it as a sort of an isolation, um, collaboration thing. Dumb. And it's it, the guy, the lead singer, is actually pretty good. It's, yeah, yeah, he's pretty rocky. It's, it's yeah, good. you've man. been doing a couple of those lately, haven't you? As well, Meg. You've the done collaboration things, like ISO collaborations. Yeah, man. It's been well. You know, it's been crazy, but I fully get why, because, mm-hmm. I mean, we're all like burst, trying to burst out of our skin, being stuck in this place. We're used to doing gigs, we're used to doing mm-hmm. events, you know, and we can't. And so the thing is, though, now that we have access to everybody and everybody has this this uh, this way of connecting with each other, people are saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's, let's do this. And it's possible, and stuff something that we would no, no, normally do because, mm-hmm. dude, I'm busy or whatever, you know, or I'm doing this or, but the fact that it's like they say, well, dude, where else are you going to go? You have no excuse. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've done a few, and they've been great. You know, some of them are. I've got actually another three on the back burner, just working on those. Um, but uh, yeah, I love them, and I, I also love watching the videos of what people do. So people are getting very creative and uh, some beautiful stuff, really heartwarming stuff. And mm. um, I think this just shows the, you know, that humans just need to communicate and to connect. Got to. And if, you know, we're just going crazy if we don't have that human connection, this is a way that we can stay in touch with people. Like, you know, like this, for example, this is, yeah. mm-hmm. this is awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I just have to jump out of myself for a little second and say that this is great. You know, it's the fact that I can see you guys. And you know, if we were doing ships, I, w- I wouldn't see you until I was on a ship. But you know, right. now I can just say, say, hey, see you in the yeah. Zoom. And we are the ones who are dictating when we can see each other mm-hmm. and when we can jam with each other. Yeah. You know, we're all over the world. I'm in England, you know, Australia, different parts of America, and it's it's pretty snappy. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. The only problem is, is that it's good for our time zone for us, but you, it's really late for you, isn't it, Steve? It's uh, 1.46 a.m. at the minute. We always know Ooh. it's time for us to finish filming when the sun comes up behind me, but I have the curtains drawn, so we won't tell mm-hmm. tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might be bad news. <laughs> yeah, but no, Sorry, I, think you know, I, get... I mean, Zoom's been incredible. I've been working a lot with a company called Song Division, um, which is uh, a company that does a lot of team building for corporations. Um, but we do like doing them in live events. You know, we write a song for a company with a company in real time you know and we then that thing and then we sing the song at the end of a conference that they all wrote together that's the kind of gist of what cool. song division does but of course you know with with uh the coronavirus every every event's cancelled so right. i mean the head of song division a guy called andy sharp who's an aussie um who started the company he's he's an amazing forward thinker and he said right guys let's get on this straight away we have to go virtual boom we have to do this and we do it and so we formulated a kind of way of doing the same events that we do live but do them through zoom um so we've now we, we we're so busy we do like two or three events a day for all different companies it's just relentless and so i'm always in front of the computer it's just 
fine and great, except I live in a one bedroom apartment <laughs> with my girlfriend and I've uh, taken over the lounge room. She loves me. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah, she I loves bet. me so much. She's gone to Miami for a while. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. god. Do you no, find? I, I don't know. That's something I, I wonder about. Because I have a beautiful girlfriend now. She's in. Well, she's closer to you than she is to me, mate. So uh, she's I in, saw. Uh, yes, that island. Yeah, I wonder like people who are living together, there's stories you hear about people who just got in like fairly new relationship or someone just mm. moved in for the first time and all of a sudden they're stuck together. Right. I yeah. mean, it's got to have an either or <laughs> type thing. It's either this is going to be like well, the best thing ever or think, they're going to kill each other. I mean, you I guys think, have been together a bit longer, obviously. I, I, I think it'll make or break you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it'll either make you or break you, you know? Mm. That's true. Well, if you can get through this... Maybe yeah. it's like, ooh, maybe this is this is uh, this is gonna work. Right, exactly. Let me ask you something though, Migs. Like, is your um, is your girlfriend also like a a musician, a creative? You know, like you? Not so much. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. she's been she's been doing working on, as a personal trainer, and then she's sort of got a real estate license. Okay. Um, but then since she's also been working in restaurants and such, so mm -hmm. but now everything's gone, it's gone kink. So she's yeah. you know, she's just taking time off. But um it ain't doing anything right now. All the Broadway is no one's doing anything right now. Broadway's <laughs> close. I'm I'm a bit concerned about when things are gonna pick up for that because yeah. Not only because of the coronavirus, but also because of the economy. People don't have the money to spend for entertainment. It's expensive to do that, to go out for a it's, night in Broadway, yeah. New York is very expensive. Broadway, yeah. I think Broadway has been disabilitatingly expensive. Like, it's mm -hmm. too much, I think. Mm -hmm. You can go to a show in the West End. I was going to um, say, you can compare them to directly because you've done both. Yes. And yeah, I, I've been to both, can, but you yeah. actually worked there. I find the West End much more affordable. I think Broadway mm -hmm. is... I understand the rent's more expensive and the wages are expensive, but I find it sometimes, I think the prices are way too high. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is something, a little bit of a shake up that Broadway needs, that if they're going to entice people back, anybody who has money, they're going to need to start to make it a bit more affordable. Yeah. yeah. You would imagine that when everything does open up, they'd do it rather slowly though, don't you think? Like, it's going to be a while. Half the amount of people in the audience. And right, right, right. Yeah, dude. I, I, to be honest, it's, Which we're doing. It's, 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 it's anybody's guess of how it's going to restart and how it's mm. going to happen. Because, mm. I, you know, people will be, first of all, frightened to be in such close proximity with people yeah. in closed spaces. Yeah. And also, the shows, a lot of shows who had to shut down for the, the virus are now, they couldn't afford to keep, continue or keep on or keep people on a retainer or anything like that. So they just, that's it, they're done. They're finished, they're closed. Yeah. So a lot of shows that are just about to start, the, the funding's been pulled out from under them. So, I mean, it's taken a huge hit. Um, yeah. Broadway's, got, I have no idea what's going to happen. I think the, the big ones can come back, you know, you've got the, you know, you've got the Chicago's and you've got the Hamilton's. And yeah. You've, mm -hmm. you've got, yeah, they won't be in trouble. They, no. They'll be back, but yeah. it's going to be, um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, you know, it's, I worry for entertainers in general, and mm -hmm. I. But and Broadway is definitely part of that. I, I worry for its existence and its how it's going to come back. It will come back. I mean, it's it will, but it's just how and how long. Right. I don't know. There's so many. No. There's going to be so many musicians just fighting, and I mean, people are fighting for jobs anyway. But there's going to be like saying there's going to be less shows and less venues open at first. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine what the audition process is going to be like, and because the old casts might not be able to all do it and you know yeah. it's gonna be tough right? it's gonna be tough well I, I do remember when i first moved to new york and i decided to you know make a, 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 a hit uh, a go of going on broadway uh it was in the 2008 um uh recession like when you know the tech, stock market crash so mm -hmm. All these shows closed all at the same time. There were like ten shows that closed in a week, and Jeez. so I got I got to New York from just doing um, a tour of Real Rock, actually an Australasian, not Australia, but an Asian New Zealand tour mm -hmm. of Real Rock here, thinking, oh, I'm going to be fine, Broadway, yeah, here we go, and 
nothing, no auditions, nothing. It's just complete like desert. And all those people who were working on these shows before are now unemployed. Of course, they're at the top of the front of the line That's to get it. the next job, you know? So it's like those people who never worked on Broadway before at the time, you got to just take a step back. So for a whole year, I was just like, you know, doing piano bar gigs and working as a set dresser for, you know, for uh, films and TV. Yeah. Um, just, you know, mopping floors and painting walls and things like that just to get through. But it, it has come, Broadway came back in the, and came back in a mm -hmm. huge way. So yeah, that's going to happen. I'm concerned about all the other musicians, us, us guys. I'm concerned about us. Broadway <laughs> is fine. It's going to take care of itself. It's a big, ugly beast and it can take care of itself. But <laughs> us. I wake up every day worried about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, shoot, you know, you got, you got cats like Steve, man. Steve has just been going live and like just killing it, you know, throwing the cash app out there or the PayPal and... <laughs> Um, you know, I, I've been seeing a lot of entertainers do that. I've even uh, seen like some comedians do that as well, um, which kind of surprised me. I, That's um, really interesting. Right. Like I, I follow this comedian on uh, Instagram and he was like, yeah, like right when the pandemic hit, they were planning for like this comedy show um, on on like Instagram TV. Oh, not Instagram TV. Um, like, you know, at a venue. Uh -huh. uh, the pandemic hit and then of course you know the show got cancelled but they're like man forget that like you know we had people waiting to you know come out and support we're just gonna go IG live and just do it so like legit like the host he you know went live on his page and then you know you can add people you know what I'm saying so he would like just add you know every comedian they would come up and do their set like on their phones man and they pin their um their cash app, and you just like send them donations, you know. And um, I thought it was pretty you know cool. How do you get a laugh? Do you just like, what you, you mean? How do you know? Like like you you know when those like, likes like, start like, going, like, you can see button. all the likes, yeah. and, and you see all the comments. Like you know, you see just laugh emoji, laugh emoji, yeah. laugh emoji. You know. Yeah. Oh God. L, L M A O, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like, oh, I'm dying, laughing, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. just that's like, a tough that's... gig without that that reaction, though. I mean, that's what the gig right. is. Like, the like, it'll be like hella boring, right? Yeah, it'll that's be cool. be interesting. It'd be interesting as the performer, you know. I mean, if you're yeah. just playing music, it's it's not so uncomfortable, right? But yeah, if you're a comedian, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like say like say for instance you know Mig you've got you've got say like your cruise ship show that you do with us and if you did just the songs from that online it would probably be fine but then imagine just doing the dialogue yeah in between the songs yeah it'd be pretty oh, boring. Like, mega. <laughs> <laughs> like that bit would be hilarious. <laughs> like, you couldn't do it, right? It wouldn't make uh, sense. But, yeah. So I just imagine a comedian must have nothing but that. Hard. That would be hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be. It'd just be odd. Well, you know, the, what I again, it's like you know, um, necessity is a mother of invention, right? So this is mm -hmm. amazing that what can you achieve with the with what you have and what you want to do. People are finding ways. It's great. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, with with song division, for example, we've never been so busy. Excuse me, that was me <laughs> thinking of Shaki. We've never been so busy in <laughs> song <laughs> division. Like we're working all the time. It's crazy. In fact, I think mm. from what we thought was going to be the worst year on record, it's actually becoming to be the best year on record for the company. Because yeah, that's wow, super that's cool. just, just doing, we have to go virtual, and people mm -hmm. we're doing small mm -hmm. events that are, you know, of course, we don't get the big um fee huge events that are you know multinational multinational multi corporation big mm -hmm. big ones but we get the small little bits and pieces but they're just regular you know two or three a day yeah 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 it's like it builds it up it means a lot more work say, sorry. it means a lot more yeah, work was, for us you know but so, um it is what it is and, and i think that people can find a way through this they will um and you just got to do it i mean that's the thing like you know congratulations for you guys for doing this I love this. This is what every, you know, it keeps people, I don't know, connected, keeps people relevant, mm. keeps people from stopping going crazy. Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Know? Except for Stephen. Well, yeah, well we, we it, it plateaus the craziness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It keeps, it keeps it me out. comfortable. Well, mine was already um, there, so it just, it's just staying there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of used to living with these two, so it's like, uh, you know, it keeps me, right, keeps me yeah. on the norm. Yeah. You know what it is, Mix? What's that? Imagine, imagine being in a plane, right? 
yeah. and the engine just cuts off on you. Ah. <laughs> but you're still in the air and you can glide. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can glide. You can pro- you can possibly <laughs> land. You can probably <laughs> land, you know? It's, but you, you, you're waiting to crank that engine back up, but yeah. you're like, okay, yeah. you know, we we might die, we might not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> it's perfect. We we're talking about phobias the other day. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's oh, my yeah, phobia of flying. flying. I'm terrified of flying. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's difficult because of what I do. Mig, do you have a phobia? Do you have anything you're terrified of? Ah, uh, yeah. Apart Besides from pain. pain. Besides pain, yeah. <laughs> yeah, apart from pain. Uh, Funny. Ah, uh, jeez. A fear of failure, I guess. But also, no, everyone has a fear of failure. But I, I used to have a huge fear of sharks. Hmm. Now, for me, that would be irrational. For you, not. I saw Jaws. <laughs> I'm showing my age here. But I saw Jaws when I was seven years old, when it first came out in the cinema. 77, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I saw it. In, in the Philippines, they have no sort of censorship. They have no... Any kid can go to an R-rated film. They don't really wow. care. And you can go in it and the, the movies just go on. At the time, they just went all day. And they didn't even worry about you, you go in at the start of the movie. You could walk into the cinema and it's halfway through the movie. You go, oh, I'll watch the, the other part of the movie, the last part. Then I'll watch the first part and then I'll leave. That's the way. <laughs> it's crazy, right? But I walk, a seven-year-old, I'm walking in with my brother and, you know, our, our nanny. We walk in, we sit down, and I'm sitting down and halfway through the film and suddenly I see a person being ripped apart in front of me. Um, <laughs> at good. seven years old, that's life-changing. Yeah. Life-changing. Yeah. I would imagine um, like my grandmother had floorboards where they had a little bit of gap in between the, the, the boards. I'd imagine um, Finn coming out through the, the, the wooden floorboards. <laughs> <laughs> Bursting through the wood and eating me, or I'd be in the bathtub and I would just like I'd be just looking at the water like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sitting sorry. on the toilet. I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm just. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> this it was serious, but now I'm a oh, but really? now I'm a certified scuba diver mm-hmm. because of that. I want to conquer my fear. I did it. I'm still scared of sharks, but I swim with them now. But yeah, it's yeah, okay. That's but I, I you know, we, sorry, go. On. No, 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 no. I, I was gonna say that's what I was talking about. Uh, you know, last time when we did the phobia episode, like that's the reason why I'm not really afraid of anything because, you know, like there were times when I I had phobias, or I was afraid of certain things, and I just conquered those things, man. The only thing I don't like is it's getting bad. hurt. <laughs> so. So he's trying to get all that. So, so every night he uh, every night he whips himself. He uh, he pinches himself. He burns himself a little bit every night. He's got a, he's got a, YouTube, he's got a YouTube channel. Actually, he's private, like, but if you want to go on yeah. it, yeah. You know, you know what hurts? <laughs> Being ripped apart by wild sharks. That would really hurt. That would I'd really imagine hurt. so. Yeah. Well, I've been I've been following these these uh, people on on Instagram. I'm fascinated. Of course, I'm fascinated by sharks. It's this morbid fascination, but also I think they're incredible, beautiful beasts. And they are. Um, and I'm just. Just to see them, I, I you know I went swimming with whale sharks, by the way, in oh, the Philippines, which was oh, life changing in wow. the Philippines. And to swim, actually, I scuba dive, swam underneath them and with them, and went out to sea with them. just the most majestic thing I've ever seen. Of course, they have no teeth. I mean, it's yeah. different. But it, they're sharks, though, and they're like yeah. you know twenty five feet, thirty feet long. Um, then when um, I follow these these people called Shark Girl Madison and Ocean Ramsey, Ocean's amazing. Were, Ocean Rams, I don't know if She's you know phenomenal. these people on Instagram. She's phenomenal. The stuff she does is amazing. Ah, you're right, right? And, um, and guy, her husband's Juan Sharks. Yeah, yeah. I know, it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> they swim with great whites. They mm-hmm. sw- out of the cage and with tiger oh, sharks. And when they come towards them, them yeah. they just put their hand out and just deflect them. Well, touch, put the hand on the nose and go, no, mm. don't eat me. And they go away. Mm. Oh, hell no. And, <laughs> oh, hell no. And even the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tiger shark says, oh, Are you sure? Are you sure? No, yeah. I, I can eat you. Going, and the, this um, Ocean Ram just goes, No, 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 you don't. You don't want to. No, you can't touch this. Da, 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 da. It's dun, dun, amazing. Da, da. And she's gorgeous as well. Dun, dun, can't touch <laughs> she's gorgeous, yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and so, from watch, dun, dun. just watching what they do, and the, they talk about shark conservation, they talk about. Um, you get to learn about sharks. They are changing my attitude completely to yeah, sharks. And just so uh, it's amazing what these guys do. 
But I'm um, not afraid of sharks anymore, except for when I, go, I have to go back in the water. I'm yeah. <laughs> Big C, um, I've, I was trying to explain to these two guys like how famous you are to me, <laughs> <laughs> being an Australian, because um, uh, M- Mig's been popping up on like on television and like around in any sort of performing medium around my life the entire time I've been growing up. I, I sent them the first episode of The Ferals oh God. this morning before... Uh, <laughs> Mr. King. Where you play Very nice show. to meet you, Mr. King. Don't mess with the Ferals, the Ferals. They can't forget to that the Ferals. Uh, um, Mr. Andrews. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love actually how, how we met Grant the first time we were on a ship where we worked together. It was kind of like we were playing, we were working at the, halfway through rehearsals. This guy screams out, you're the guy from the Ferals! <laughs> <laughs> I did, man. Yeah, like, holy shit! Holy shit, you're the guy from the Ferals! <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. Shh. Oh, and, um, and Rockstar in excess. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're that, I, I know you. You're that. You're that if guy. I, well, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, I do. I do love I the Ferals. That, that, that was. That was. It was a children's it's, TV series way back in the early '90s, and uh, it was the best. I was proud of it. I was really proud of it. It's gr- it was like you know. This I think t- it's great. It's um. It doesn't. It it doesn't overly pander to young children, which I like. No, it was. It, I can, it, yeah. I can enjoy it now as well. Like it's still kind of, it's still like funny to me as an adult. Well, I think it, it sort of hit, the, the writers were very clever in that they hmm. they pitched the humor and the story to several levels. So, you know, there's a lot of underlying things which are a bit, went over the kids' heads, but you know, it's much like, you know, it's, when you look at the Simpsons, like the kids love this, the cartoon, the animation, but really there's a lot more underneath that only, you know, all the people will understand, but. You, that, you enjoy it more as you get older because you get more of the jokes. Possibly, you know? yeah. Definitely. No, yeah. I, I, I love that working on that show, but uh, it's amazing. That was 30 years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. 25 it was the, years the mid nine, the mid-90s, right? Yeah. I think. 93, yeah. 94, we filmed that. So, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Man. Well, you mentioned uh, In Excess. How did you get involved in that? Because I remember that being on TV. Yeah. Um, the, you, that You were a finalist in that? Yeah, for Rockstar in Excess. Well, I was actually in London at the time doing We Will Rock You in London. Mm-hmm. And I heard about these auditions for a new show. They're looking for the lead singer of In Excess. I'm like, Ooh, wow, that's my jam. They're my boys. Yeah, um, and being Australian, that probably was like, oh shit, In Excess. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> ex- yeah, they're enormously big to Meg and me. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, this is the thing I thought, oh, of course I've got to just, check it out. Of course, I was really happy. I, mean, I was playing the lead in We Will Rock You. I was being paid really well. And mm-hmm. just, we just bought a, oh, it's going to lose the microphone. Nope. We just bought a, you know, we just bought an apartment in London. We have a dog and I, I love my play. I didn't want anything to change. I just wanted to just check out what this thing was. So I went over to the auditions and sang a couple of songs. And then two, yeah, I got a call back two weeks later. And then two weeks later, I got the call saying, uh, okay, we're gonna fly to Los Angeles um, to do. The, you're in the final. You're in the final fifty for the show, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't really work this out very well because I just signed my third year contract for We Will Rock You. So I somehow had to get out of it. But the, the people in We Will Rock You were very kind, and they let me out of the contract because they realized this was a big opportunity. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I went off to LA and made it to the final three. And um, I came third, so I got to the final. Now our next rocker starts six nights a week in London's smash hit musical, We Will Rock You. This is Mig Ayesa.
but it was like it was life changing, you know. Um, it, I, I live in the states is because of that. Got a green card and um, yeah, That's so I live in this paradise. Thanks, in excess. Yeah. <laughs> he bought the entirety of Times Square. Uh, yeah, bought it. that's his back garden. And shut it down. <laughs> he owns, he runs 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 what first place has. He he runs runs it. It. <laughs> Hi guys, Steve here from Bones Twigs and Wicks. I hope you're enjoying the interview with Mick Ayesa so far. We had such a great time with him that we decided to make this a two-part interview. In the second part, we're going to be talking about movie royalty and actual royalty as well. There's some interesting stories there, which I'm sure you don't want to miss. So please do tune in for the next episode. Please like, subscribe, rate, do all those good things and uh, stay safe, look after yourself and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you guys. Peace.